Hi guys, this is Gregor for Personas, and today I have a very special episode for you, which is actually taken from Personosphere, a membership platform that gives you Studio One Professional, Notion, as well as our award-winning instrument and plugin collections, but also exclusive video content, such as the one that you're about to see. On Personosphere, we often dive much deeper into a topic than we do on YouTube, and we also discuss a lot of topics that are not necessarily related directly to Studio One. For instance, compression. The video you're about to see right now is from my compression masterclass, which are three parts in total, and the first part I wanted to share with you today. I hope you enjoy this kind of content. If you do, consider subscribing to Personosphere, because we're adding more videos like this every month. Enjoy. Today I want to talk to you about one of the most essential and fundamental tools in the toolbox of any music producer or audio engineer. I'm talking about the compressor. Now the other fundamentally important, maybe even more important audio processor, the equalizer, has already been covered beautifully by my good friend and colleague Joe Gilder. But the compressor, I have to say, even though it is almost as important as the equalizer, is far less understood. And that is what I'm trying to change starting today. I know that compression is a frightening topic at first, but you can break it down to the very fundamentals and then get deeper from there. And even if you're an absolute beginner, I think that you can take certain things away from this masterclass and you will know more about compression than you did before and the confusion will go away, I promise. And why am I so sure of this, even if you've already watched hundreds of videos and scoured the interwebs uh, to finally understand it? Well, because I didn't understand it either and I can still relate to that feeling and I also remember the points of confusion that I had and it's very likely that those are similar to those that you're having. There's one thing you might not know about me, uh, among a couple other things, but this one in particular, even though I like all the sophisticated audio talk, I'm completely self-taught. I didn't go to any audio institute or audio university uh, or academy to learn all this stuff. I'm completely self-taught and I remember the struggles that I had. And I think that by now I kind of build a method of explaining complex topics. And my way to go about it is simplify then specify. So first, break down this complex topic to the very basic function. Like what does it do? at its core and only when we understand that we can look at the specifics and how that is actually achieved. If we don't understand what compression does and what it is for, if we only know that you should slam it on something so it becomes more fatter, then we don't have to talk about the specifics, how it's achieved because it doesn't make sense to begin with, right? So first we have to understand what the compressor does and once we understand that, we can look at how that's achieved. Now, if you're completely new to compression, it's possible that the uh, second part of this um, specific masterclass will be a bit too advanced for you, but I'm confident that you can take something away from this first part. So hang in there. So let me reveal the secret. What does the compressor do? And let me give you the slightly more complex answer first and then the simple one next. So don't be shocked if you don't get it right away. The compressor reduces dynamics. Dynamics in audio means nothing but variation in level. How large is the difference between quiet and loud? That is your dynamic range. And that dynamic range gets smaller with the compressor. It doesn't get quieter, but the difference between loud and quiet gets smaller. If this is your signal, this is super quiet, this is super loud. The compressor does this. All right. It reduces the highest signal or the highest signals, the, the, loudest, the loudest parts essentially, while leaving the quiet ones untouched. And then it raises the volume of the entire thing to make up for the volume that was lost. So you end up with a signal that's just as loud, but way less dynamic because the difference between quiet and loud is super small or not so small depending on your settings. We're gonna talk about the specifics later. What does that mean in real life terms? Well, that means that with a compressor, I can make it so that me whispering or me screaming is exactly the same volume. I actually took it that far 
that a singer didn't understand what compression was and he was here in my studio and I made him put on headphones and he could hear his eyelashes close, right? He could hear me scrape with my fingernails and I was sitting a couple of meters away and then I told him, scream into the microphone right now. And he was like, no, no, I'm, I'm too afraid. I don't dare to. And I was like, trust me, leap of faith, do it. And then he did and it was exactly the same volume. And that moment, he kind of got an understanding what the compressor does. And that was more than he got from compression in five years. Compression is also on my voice right now, by the way. So as I'm switching to the other camera and look away from my mic, I'm pretty much staying at the same volume level, am I not? You know, also when I move a bit to the right, a bit to the left, sure, you can hear whether I'm closer or further going away, but the volume stays pretty much the same. This would be impossible without a compressor. So now you might ask yourself, well, if it's really that simple, and of course I'm grossly oversimplifying, but if I'm telling the truth, then why is it that so many people don't get compression and are confused when they're being put on the spot to say what compression is? Well, I think that is because unlike equalizers, compressors have a third dimension to them. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, an equalizer has two dimensions, really. It's frequency, low or high, right? And level, up or down. But the compressor has a third dimension, and that is a condition. Only reduce the level at this point in time if this condition is met. And I think that freaks a lot of people out, even though it doesn't have to. What also doesn't help is that there's so many different kinds of compressors out there. There are so many compressors that pretty much anything I could say about them would probably be proven wrong by at least one of the models in existence. But to understand what a compressor is in audio in general terms, we're going to look at the most common one, which is a VCA compressor. And these kind of values that we're going to talk about, you're going to find in the vast majority of compressors out there. So I think it's best to start with these kind of values. You don't find these values on every compressor, but on many, if not most compressors. These values are threshold, ratio, attack, and release. And you would actually be shocked how many audio professionals don't really understand threshold and ratio and just dial that in by ear, not really sure what they're doing, but you know, they have their tried and tested tricks. They think this sounds great. And after 10 minutes, they realize it was on bypass. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But ratio and threshold aren't as confusing as they seem at first. And my analogy to explain them is actually taxes. And I think that's weird because I'm not super into taxes. You know, uh, I like taxes as much as the next guy and filing them is not my favorite activity in the world. But I think that the analogy of the compression tax really helps you understand it. Let me break it down for you. Imagine there would be a compression tax effective today. And the compression tax says that as soon as you make a certain amount of money, based on every cent that you're making on top of that, you're going to pay a certain percentage of tax. That's not that hard to understand, right? As soon as your salary or your level in that case passes a certain point, the threshold, everything that comes after it is being taxed. And this is something that most audio engineers already get wrong. They always say, you know, the threshold is met and then the entirety of the volume gets pushed down. That's simply not true. Everything that stays below the threshold is completely untouched. So let me draw this on a diagram for you to make that even more clear. And I'm really not a Picasso, but I think that you're gonna understand this even better if I just draw this out for you really quickly. Let's go. So let's say we have a signal, okay? This is our signal, kind of like you see it in the Studio One mixer, right? This is like when it's peaking, this is the highest point, this is the lowest point of this signal. Let's say this signal is 80 dB A, sound pressure level. This is just because it's the easiest scale for us right now. Otherwise, we have to think in minus values all the time, right? So let's say this level is 80 dB, the signal. Now we have a compressor on the signal and it has a threshold set to, 
I hope this is half, yeah. <laughs> 40 dB. Okay, so we have a signal that's 80 dB and we have 40 dB below threshold, okay, and 40 dB above threshold. 40 plus 40, 80. You get the idea. Now, the compressor with the threshold has determined that anything that goes past the 40 dB mark here will be reduced in gain. What we have to determine now is by how much, and that we do with the ratio. So with the ratio of 2 to 1, we have to basically divide everything that goes above the threshold by 2. So meaning that these 40 dB would now be only half as loud. So 40 dB with the ratio 2 to 1 means just divided by 2. Ratio 4 to 1 would be divided by 4. Ratio 8 to 1 would be divided by 8 and so forth, right? But in this case, 2 to 1. 40 dB divided by 2 is 20. So instead of 40 dB going above the threshold, we only have 20 dB going above the threshold. Okay, so the result would look kind of like this, right? The signal goes up and this is where the threshold sets in and starts to reduce the gain. Now this is not taking into account attack and release. We're going to talk about these separate because now we first have to understand threshold and ratio. So now we only have 40 dB below threshold. 20 dB instead of 40 dB above threshold, so the entire signal is 60 dB, right? 40 dB here plus 20 is 60 dB. Meaning with the threshold set to 40 and ratio 2 to 1, we have a gain reduction of 20 dB at 80 dB signal level. That wasn't so hard, was it? So how much would it be with a ratio of 4 to 1, like this? Well, that's just as easy. We have 40 dB above threshold, as we said in the beginning, divided by 4, that's 10. So now we take 40 below threshold plus 10, that's 50, and 50 is 30 less than the original 80, meaning 30 dB of gain reduction. So far, so good. So we already understood threshold and ratio. That's pretty much 50% of most compressors and more than 80% of people know about compressors. How about limiters though? Let's talk quickly about limiters because with the things that we just learned in mind, we will understand them super quickly. This time I want to use the 0 dB FS scale because that's a very common use case in audio. And let's say that we have a limiter inserted with a threshold set to minus 1 dB. Okay, now we have a signal going in here and let's say that peaks at plus 3 dB. So it would clip our converter, not good, that's not what we want. A limiter is nothing but a compressor with very, very extreme settings. So it has very fast attack, very fast release. We're going to talk about these values in just a second. But most importantly, it has a ratio of pretty close to infinite to one, right? That means that anything that passes the threshold, in this case, 3 dB, will be divided down so hard by this ratio that it's effectively zero again, right? So we can never pass this point of threshold. That right there is the idea of a brick wall limiter. So. I'm pretty sure that I've never done a video before uh, where I filled 10 to 15 minutes without a single screen capture. Yeah, something new for Sphere exclusives, only for our Persona Sphere members. The next episode is going to be all about practice, putting what we just learned into practice and getting to know all these types of different compression there are. And we can do this beautifully with the Fat Channel Collection, which is also, of course, included in your Personosphere membership. Talk to you in a bit.